In this video, we're going to do some examples of integrating the unit step function and the delta function. The delta function wasn't part of the video lecture, but it was part of the reading. I'm going to give you a quick overview of what the delta function is anyways. First, we have to go back to the unit pulse function. I'm just going to quickly sketch it. We can model the unit pulse function as the subtraction of two unit step functions. Let's say the unit pulse function has a width of delta t. The delta function is just the limit of the pulse function as delta t goes to zero. It looks something like this. The delta function turns on, per se, at time t0. The delta function actually has a width of delta t, but because delta t is so small, we basically draw it as a straight vertical line. One property of the delta function is that the height of the delta function is just 1 over delta t. Just to recap, the delta function has a length of delta t, although delta t is so small that you basically can't see it, so we draw it as a straight vertical arrow instead. It has a height of 1 over delta t. The delta function does not exist in nature because mathematically there is no such thing as an actual limit, but it's used frequently in engineering, particularly in vibrations. Later on, you might hear the delta function referred to as the impulse. A very common application is hitting something with a hammer. When you hit something with a hammer, you impart a very large force over a very short time. This is essentially the delta function. Okay, that was a brief overview of the delta function. Now let's get started on some of the problems. Part A wants us to calculate the integral of the shifted heaviside step function from 0 to 3. You can solve all of these integrals analytically, but I think these problems are easiest done graphically. Let's draw the integrand h of t minus 1. The integral is just the area under the curve from 0 to 3. The integrand is h of t minus 1, so the step function is shifted by one unit. The step function turns on at t equals 1 instead of t equals 0. The integral of this expression from 0 to 3 is just the total area under the curve from 0 to 3. Well, we can see that the area from 0 to 1 is just 0. But then we can see that the area from 1 to 3 is basically just a rectangle. And because we know the unit step function has a y value of 1, this makes calculating the integral incredibly easy. The total area under the curve is therefore i equals the base of the rectangle, which is 3 minus 1, or 2 units, times the height of the rectangle, which is 1, or i equals 2. Now let's move on to part b. Part b is pretty similar to part a, except we're now integrating over a different time span. Instead of integrating from 0 to 3, we're only integrating from 2 to 3. So if we look at the range from 2 to 3, we basically want to find the area of this rectangle here. The length of this purple rectangle is 1, and the height is 1, which means that the area is just 1. Now we move to the delta function. In particular, we're moving to the shifted delta function. When we shift the delta function, it does the same thing as when we shift, say, the heaviside step function. It just makes it so that the delta function turns on at a different time. Instead of the function spiking up at t equals 0, the delta function will now spike up at t equals 2 seconds. Once again, the delta function has a height of 1 over delta t. It also has a length of delta t, but delta t is so small that we just model the delta function as a straight vertical arrow. We're integrating over the time span 1 to 3. The integral from 1 to 2 is just the area under this curve, which is, well, 0. The integral from 2 to 3 is also 0. But the integral at t equals 2 seconds is just equal to the area of the delta function. Remember that the delta function is basically just a rectangle with a really, really, really small delta t as its length, and a height of 1 over delta t. Therefore, the total area under the curve from 1 to 3 is just the area under the delta function. The base of the rectangle is delta t, and the height of the rectangle is 1 over delta t, so the integral equals delta t times 1 over delta t equals 1. 
Part D is a pretty similar problem. Now we shift the delta function to turn on at t equals 3 seconds instead of 2 seconds. We're also integrating over the time span 1 to 2. But we can see that the delta function doesn't even turn on until t equals 3, so the area under the curve is just 0. Part E is where things get interesting. We want to take the integral of delta t minus 2 times some unknown function f of t. We don't know what the function f of t is, so we just have to assume something. I'm just going to draw something random like that. One practical use of the delta function is its ability to sift out particular values. Notice that the delta function is zero everywhere except at the point of interest. So when we multiply it with another function such as f of t, all the values of f of t except for the one at the point of interest will be set to zero. Maybe it's easiest if I show this graphically. I'm going to define a new function g of t, which is just the multiplication of the delta of t minus 2 and the f of t functions. Let's start at time equals 0. The delta function at time equals 0 is 0. f of t is something, but it doesn't even matter because something times 0 is 0. Same thing with time equals 1 second. The delta function is 0, so it doesn't matter what f of t is. This continues all the way up until t equals 2. Now, when t equals 2, the delta function has a value of 1 over delta t, and f of t has a value of, let's just call it f of 2, so the value of these two functions multiplied together is just f of 2 over delta t. The delta function is everywhere else after t equals 2 seconds, so it negates whatever value f of t has. Now we want to take the integral of g of t from 0 to 3 seconds. From 0 to 2 seconds, the area under the curve is just 0, and from 2 seconds onwards, the area is also 0. At t equals 2 seconds, we have this delta, which is basically an infinitely thin rectangle. The length of the rectangle is delta t, and the height of the rectangle is f of 2 over delta t, which means that the area is just f of 2. Finally, we've come to the generalized case of the shifted delta function. The shifted delta function turns on at some unknown time t0. We want to integrate over the range 0 to t, but we don't know exactly where t is. t could be before, on, or after t0, so we have to split the integral into three regions. One case accounting for when t is less than t0, one case accounting for when t equals t0, and the last case accounting for when t is greater than t0. When t is less than t0, the delta function is turned off. This one's pretty easy. Region 2 occurs when t equals t0 exactly. When t equals t0, the area under the curve is just 1 because the length of the delta modeled as a rectangle is 1. We also have to remember to take into account region 1, because when t equals t0, we will have integrated over the entire region 1. It actually doesn't matter because region 1 is 0 anyways, but this is just the mathematically correct method. Finally, region 3. When t is greater than t0, we will have integrated all of regions 1 and 2, plus a little bit past that. As you can see from the graph, 
Anywhere after t0 just has a value of 0, so we're not adding any new area under the curve. This means that the integral after t0 is just going to be 1 as well. And we can summarize this. We can also write this in terms of the unit step function. This leads us to the valuable result that the integral of the delta function is the unit step function. This is a very important property that you'll definitely see later on in classes like vibrations and controls. Although you might not take vibrations or controls for another couple years, I hope that showing it to you now will make the concept look familiar, not foreign, once you get to those classes. See you next time.